I am Flavia Zimmerman from the Australian Institute of International Affairs in Western Australia. And today we have with us Dr. Ian Chalmers from the University of Western Australia. And today we are going to be discussing ISIS, recruitment and radicalization in Indonesia. Good to have you with us. Yes, good afternoon. Dr. Ian. Um, Ian, can you please um, explain to us um, Indonesia being one of the largest Muslim countries in the world, there are claims that um, it is also one of the largest um, exporters of radicalization and um, also there are claims that Indonesia is one of the countries where there are the, the greatest recruitment of um, ISIS operatives um, in the region. Um, to which extent this statement is correct? Yeah, well, it, uh, what you say is basically correct. There is uh, Indonesia is well known for its tolerant form of Islam, its moderate form of Islam, but nevertheless there are quite a significant number of uh, jihadists, militant Islamists, who, who are Indonesian who have fought in Syria and Iraq. Uh, there are at least 200, some say as many as 700, have, have fought there, but so it's probably somewhere in between, perhaps 400. Mm. Mm, thank you very much. And um, in your opinion, um, which would be the main causes of youth radicalization in Indonesia, and um, which would be the best pathways to possibly counter it? Mm. Well, it's v there are very many causes, there are multiple causes. There's a whole lot of reasons that some people, a small minority, become radicalized. Uh, often it's very local concerns, uh, uh, an ethnic conflict or a dis dislike of neighbours or, or some people actually get caught up in their spirit of the thing, for them it's a big adventure uh, mm -hmm. to struggle to, to realise uh, Islamic State in our country or overseas. Um, so because of the multiple causes, uh, multiple reasons, uh, the uh, uh, solution to it has to be very varied too. There's no single bullet, if you like, but I shouldn't use that term, right? <laughs> uh, there's no single, single solution. Mm. But um, could you please just expand a little bit more on possible counter-narratives to the whole phenomenon of radicalization and ISIS recruitment in yes. Indonesia? Yeah, counter-narrative is just the right word. It's, uh, I prefer that to counter-terrorism, because counter-terrorism is necessary, security measures, uh, uh, jailings and policing and court proceedings and all that is, is necessary, but uh, I prefer the term countering counter violent extremism. So the ideological and the social processes b which bring people back, they, at one stage they may have become committed, but very, very many people in Indonesia who were radicalised have been de-radicalised or at least disengaged from active involvement. Mm. Mm, thank you very much. and. Um, can um, you please um, explain um, to which extent um, people that are becoming radicalized and recruited by ISIS, um, when they return to Indonesia, mm. to which extent they will be posing a threat to national security to Indonesia and in the region? Yeah, this is a very con big concern. There's about 200 returnees already, mm. um, and the danger is, which many people have thought about, have, have identified, is that they'll come back with new skills. There have been a lot of very amateurish uh, events in the last few years, bombings that haven't succeeded and people blowing themselves up. Mm. Uh, the danger is that these people have now learned more uh, skilled techniques for, for assembling bombs, using bombs. Um, so there is, there is this danger, um, uh, but on the other hand, the, the local Islamist community, the militants, are the divided amongst themselves too, which is a, uh, creates an opening for, for counter to, for CVE activism uh, to uh, convince these people that perhaps it's not the right cause because of the internal dissension within the Islamist ranks themselves. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Ian. Mm -hmm. And um, just to uh, wrap up our interview, um, can you please ex explain um, to which extent um, the Australia-Indonesian defence cooperation could uh, play a role in uh, countering 
this um, move towards radicalization in Indonesia and uh, which would be the best pathway for both Australia and Indonesia to work together um, against um, ISIS recruitment? Yes, yes. Well, Australia actually already has played a significant role, the, the military and, the, uh, and other social uh, political forces in uh, supporting the counter-terrorism or the CVE efforts, mm -hmm. uh, even after the initial Bali bombings in 2002. A key forensic advice was provided by the Australians uh, on, the, uh, okay. on the other hand, if uh, Australia, or America for that matter, plays too prominent a role in supporting the counter-terrorism efforts, that can backfire. Mm. One of the biggest recruitments, uh, recruitment weapons of the radicals is to sort of say, ah, the great Satan, you know, that is, the great Satan is, is attacking us and we have to defend her. So Bush's war on terror was often interpreted in militant circles as a war on Islam. Mm. And that, that aided the, the militants in, in recruiting new people. So uh, the logical conclusion from that is that to effectively counter terrorism and, and build the CVE mentality, uh, you have to do it subtly and promote education, which the Australian government's done a lot of, mm. uh, and uh, also pr promote the counter terrorism narrative. Mm, thank you very much, Dr. Ian. A great pleasure being with you today. Mm. And uh, thank you for uh, being with us. And for more information, please visit our website www.internationalaffairs.org.au. Thank you.